day number three of putting something together and just hoping for the best. Today we're going to take a closer look at this Nuvolo Aquanaut Extreme. Now they have a, a couple models here. We got the Extreme Edition, uh, which doesn't have like a very good reason other than it is all black and I wanted to have the all black one. Now I do not know so much about this thing except for that it comes without a pump. It's a water block pump combo but it comes without a pump. And my solution for this problem is to steal a pump from... Where did I put it? Oh, here. To steal the pump from one of those uh, Fantex Glacier Reservoir Pump Combos. Uh, I guess one of them will fit. But first, let's have a closer look at this and what we get in the box because it's, it seems to be a bit more of a complicated topic. So this is basically what we will get, which this seems to be like the top portion of it, the bottom portion, where you can see where the water flows essentially, and you can see there is nothing sealed here, you have no O-rings. Yeah, it's, it's basically a do-it-yourself kit. Then we got a bunch of screws, I suppose, uh, installation material for AMD and Intel. This seems to be what keeps all of this together. And then here we have the cold plate of the base which oh my god this is one heavy piece of copper it is a giant block what is this like like 50 times 50 oh god this is 62 by 62 this is enormous really enormous. i think i think even the biggest that i have seen so far and here you can see the channels where all the water will be flowing and oh boy oh boy so i'm not even sure which way to put it without destroying anything so let's just try this here then we got two of these closing pieces, a back plate, even more back plates, AMD plates and the O-rings. And in the box we will also get something that resembles a manual. I can already see that we don't need to scan that QR code, we can also just go ahead. It seems to be explained fairly well. Apparently we need to install all the O-rings here and then this plate basically on top. Let's maybe scan the QR code, which just goes onto their website. Mm -hmm. Video installation guide. Yeah, seems I was right. So all we need to do is, or the first thing we need to do is put all the O-rings in there. Let's do that. The biggest one, I suppose, will go in here. Uh -huh. It falls out. <laughs> ah, this one stays in. Okay, okay, okay. I have one in. It just keeps falling out. Yeah, let's maybe do not do this on the table, I will just scratch things. No, it keeps falling out. Stop falling out. How are these supposed to stay in there? Yeah, let's maybe put one in and then like press it a bit. Maybe that will help in the long run. Okay, seems that it's going to stay in there now. Now let's do the hardest one. I can already tell you, the whole thing is a lot harder than it might look on camera. One hour later. Okay, now all of them are in. Maybe I just like screw it down. Although I should not do it. Let's maybe just screw it down to apply as much force as possible for a few minutes um, onto the whole block uh, or more onto these screws, oh, these screws, these O-rings, so that it, it stays, stays together for a minute. The problem is I have no thread. Why is there nothing to thread this in? No, there is no thread. Okay, so let's just keep it together like that by hand for a minute or two. Okay, the O-rings seem to have adjusted to their new form and are not popping out for now. So let's put this aside and hope for the best. And now let's add the last O-ring. 
well, I think the last, I hope the last, which is this one here. And actually, I can already use this plate to keep the O-ring in, because this plate is going to stay on there afterwards. And then, is there like an orientation? Oh, fin direction. Okay, so the fins need to go across, so this way here. Okay, so this is crucial. The, the fins need to be in the other direction than this slit. This seems to be the only thing that is important here. Perfect. Yes. Like this. Yeah. The O-ring completely seals off the whole thing. And now I can already position this onto this. And then the four screws here are the 14 millimeter ones, which should be those here. But they don't seem to be threading into anything. Why are they not threading? Okay, this one is is threading into something. Oh, okay, I think the plate is slightly off. Yes, now I have something. Okay, now the 10 millimeter ones are going onto those side pieces here. In general, I enjoyed doing this. This was a, I would say, fun experience. I feel like this is how, how people feel about building their own keyboard, something that... Go up table. Oh, I love these movable tables. So I feel like this is something that people who built their own keyboard would enjoy. And I really enjoyed it. The O-ring was <laughs> a heavy task, but overall it was it, it was cool. Uh, my point, however, about all of this is why? Why is this not pre-assembled? As in, there is only one way of putting it together. I would have understood, or I, I would understand right now, if, for example, the way you put this together has an influence on what socket compatibility you got. Like, for example, you would need to move something for AM4, AM5, and you need to move it in the, the other direction for Intel. If that would be the case, I would understand it. However, on here, it, there is no case. You put it together in exactly the same way every goddamn time, so why is this not pre-assembled, like, from the get-go? Maybe it's to, to reduce price. Uh, in the end, they just cut, I suppose, cut all of this and then box it and then ship it and nobody needs to put it together and I do understand if this, like, doing it this way lowers the price by some degree, then okay, fine. But overall, it was a nice experience if you like to, to tinker around with these things. Now, for today, before ending the video, I would say let's install it on the motherboard so that we are ready to assemble the PC for the next time. Now, this is an older board and a older platform, but in the end, a 5800X3D is still an amazing CPU. So I do not see a reason why this PC for my own gaming usage wouldn't perform perfectly fine. I will take the camera back into top position and then we're gonna assemble this thing. Okay, so how do I put this together now? Again, without a manual. I do not particularly enjoy them not including a manual. But I suppose we need the back plate. And I'm just guessing that this goes here. And now... Let me guess, this doesn't fit. Yeah, it doesn't fit. Those are for the LGA mountings. And the black or grayish ones are for AMD. And I suppose we need the backplate. Something like that. Do we have any other installation material? No, we don't. Oh, no. Yeah, you can see my uh, stupid arrow. Yeah, that, that was kind of dumb from my part. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> the mounting plate, depending on the socket, needs to go in between, like all of this. Ah, good job there. But okay, uh, however, at this point, we can also decide how we will orient this whole thing. So we have two possibilities, basically this and basically this, and or with uh, the two poles here in the bottom pointing down. Now, if I look at the motherboard, 
Um, is left and right even possible? Yes, it is. So we could do left and right, we could do top, bottom. However, the more I think about it, I think having the pump at the top is the best option because that way I can hide the pump power connector, the PVM or SATA or whatever I'm going to use, I can hide it the quickest. Uh, in the sense of putting it uh, to the top where, where we have a PVM header on the motherboard. If I would have the pump at the bottom, I would need to route it somehow across and I think that's not going to be great for aesthetics. So let's put it in the top, but first we need to remove all of these screws again. Okay, okay, okay. Now I understand it. That's why you need to assemble the whole thing. Because you need to decide which mounting plate you're going to use. Ah. Now I get it. Okay, so Nuvolo made a, a wise choice here. Okay, let, let me take back everything I said before. This makes perfect sense now. Now I get it. You get the tinkering and you get the decision. Okay, and the O-rings are still in there. So this now needs to go. Okay, and now I'm also completely hiding away the screws because before you could kind of see them from the side and now they are hidden. Okay, now everything falls into line. Now I get it. So we're going to have the pump at the top, the tubes in the bottom, somewhat like this. As for the thermal paste, uh, with the recent box we got from Scythe, we got some of their Thermal Elixir G for the real Gs. Ideal for overclocking. We are not going to overclock. But if it's good for overclocking, it's also going to be good for this here. Hey, a thermal paste spreader, which I'm not going to use. Let me take back my take back from two minutes ago. We cannot do this. We can do left, right. <laughs> oh, we can do right, left, but not top, bottom, because otherwise the screws don't fit. Today is really not my day. Please, God, allow me to unscrew this without touching the thermal paste. The positive aspect about this is that I basically assembled this uh, Aquanaut Extreme for the third time now. So I'm really good at this now. Like this. Okay. So let's do tubes to the left, but it's possible that I will rethink this at a later point. And now the screws will fit. Great. Ta-da! The last thing we are going to do for today is see if we can steal the pump of this R260C combo from Fantex because I do not have another pump and I really do need one. This is going to be reused for another build in the future uh, but let me just say for a second what the fuck is this giant? Look at this giant distro plate or oh, the build that we are going to do with this is going to be amazing but the pump runs on PVM and SATA and I'm thinking if I have a pump that runs just on PWM, PVM, sorry. If I have a pump that runs on only PVM, let me take a look on the, in the back room. Do I have a PVM pump? <laughs> okay, I do not have a raw PVM pump, but what I do have is this Fantex Glacier R220 OC combo whose pump is just a lot smaller, so we're going to go with this one uh, because I, I I don't even know if I can fit the giant pump in there. It's it's like a, a block. It's too much. Let, let's take this one. Perfect. I just need the O-ring. And let's screw these screws back in because I can guarantee you I will lose them and then I will be so freaking pissed next time we do a Fantex build. And I'm missing some screws. And for you... The cables are coming in in the bottom and it says Fantex here. And I'm not willing to have the Fantex text be the wrong way. So we're going to do this having the cables again come out in the bottom, which is the thing, the very thing I wanted to avoid all this time. Great. And I'm just realizing the wrench that uh, Nuvolo adds in the box is not the same size as the pump screws that they include, which 
which doesn't make a lot of sense in my mind, but hey. The overall installation went fine. We learned a lot along the way. Like for example, read the manual. Most of my mistakes could have been avoided if I would have watched the whole video that Nuvolo puts out. But uh, in the end, installation was really fine. It was an experience for once to put together a water block with the O-rings instead of just slapping it on and screwing it down and being finished. This is something else. I liked it, but I do understand if somebody does not want to fiddle around with the O-rings. I would still, I would compare it to the people that put together keyboards. Most people don't want to do that, but the ones that do have a lot of fun doing it, so why not? So this is a cool thing. I'm, I'm pretty glad how this turns out. And overall, it's just a freaking giant block. This, this, is, this thing is just enormous. It's ridiculous how big this is. But uh, about its performance, we will see once it's, it's running. I don't know yet. I, I don't, and I don't want to give any opinion about the thing before I tested it. Right now I can just say like quality wise, touching wise, everything feels nice. The top part is still plastic, but the bottom, the, the base, the, the cold plate, oh my god, that was one giant and extremely, extremely big piece of, of, uh, of copper. Oh my god, was that thing big. And 62 by 62, that's even big, that's big for something like Alpha Cool standards. It's, it's, I am sure that this thing is going to perform good, but we will see about that once the PC is running. For the next time, we'll slap this in, we will start slapping in the radiators, figure out the fan situation, which fans are we going to use, and then start to assemble the whole thing, because we still got a lot of work before us. But for today, this is going to be it. Uh, another big thank you to Nuvolo for sending over this gigantic water block. This is one giant thing, and I hope the finished build turns out fine, and if you could not see it until now, it's going to be mostly black. It's going to be a black build, but we are going to see that in the next episode. For today, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.